Welcome back. In this video, we are going to go through how to use symbols to create a template for pattern design. This way you can export either the tile for the pattern itself, or you already have something set up and you can print it out on a piece of paper and use it as gift wrap or as a better way of exporting it for print on demand sites like Society6 and Zazzle. So to get started, I have already opened up a document and I want to switch over to this second tool down, which is the artboard tool. Just make a square, it does not matter what size. And then go over to the right side at the very bottom, you will see the transform panel. For this, I'm just going to make the width two inches and the height two inches for a square. If you want to design a rectangle instead, I know a lot of people when they're doing pattern design prefer to do rectangles as they think that it kind of hides the tile a little bit better. So make the size that you'd like and then come over and make a larger one. Once again, just kind of click and drag and I want to make this, I'm going to do eight inches by eight inches. And I'm going to zoom in using command and the plus sign. Space bar will bring up that hand tool and I can kind of adjust it on the screen where I would like it. Now with artboard one selected, going to grab that rectangle tool. Once again, click and drag, going to make it two inches by two inches. You can align it either by using your move tool, or you could go up to the align panel, which looks like a bar graph. And then you could click align horizontally and align vertically. To set up the template, we're going to use symbols. If you've been around for a little while on my channel, you may have watched the video on creating mandelas in Affinity Designer, and we used symbols in that as well. So I will leave a link in the description as well as it should be appearing at the top right in this video. So go to View, Studio, symbols. With that square selected, click create and you can X off of that because you no longer need it. To make any adjustments to that square or the symbol, first click on the triangle next to artboard one and then you'll see another triangle next to symbol and there is the rectangle. Just so I can see it a little bit better, I'm going to change the color of this. We can start off with a red, make it like a deeper red since it's fall. And now with the symbol selected, you can drag it down to what looks like a piece of paper and copy it, or you could have selected it and used Command C, Command V to copy and paste. And I'm just gonna drag this over to Artboard 2 and move it over. So I want to align it into that top left corner of the second artboard. So Command C, Command V to copy and paste. and I want to align it next to that first one. I'm going to select both of these, Command C, Command V. Once again, align it and select all four. I'm, to make it easier, I'm going to group these. So Command G or right click group. Command C, Command V to copy and paste. And do that two more times to fill up the artboard. I'm 
So it was showing that everything was lined up correctly. You may see some of these lines. You can go in and adjust as needed so that they disappear. And you may see slight faint lines. Some of that is okay um, if you have ever made a pattern in Illustrator, you'll notice these and they are known as fragment lines. And some of them will go away as you zoom in and zoom out. You'll notice them. But if you zoom all the way in, they really shouldn't be there so we can make adjustments to fix those. Okay, so these do go away. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Going back over to that first artboard Clicking on that symbol because this first symbol is what is going to affect everything on that second artboard. So the best way to get started is to do a very simple pattern. We'll do a polka dotted pattern because it is very easy. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool. Make sure after you select your ellipse tool that you have the rectangle selected because most of the time if you don't have that selected, it's going to try to throw that ellipse or whatever you're creating above the symbol. So just make sure that rectangle is selected so that it goes into the correct spot. So hold shift so it remains a circle. And as you can see, it went exactly where it was supposed to. I'm going to change this to a light pink for now. Switching over to the move tool, you can click that first button on the left toolbar or V on your keyboard. I have the magnet turned on so that it will let me know when I have this moved exactly in the center. You can see because it'll pop up with that green line and that red line and you can kind of feel it when you're dragging. So holding down Alt or Option on your keyboard, and then click your ellipse and drag down. And now you can release the Alt or Option and you can see when it has aligned exactly as it should so that ellipse is centered. So selecting both of the circles, holding Alt, drag to the other side, you can release the option or alt key. And I'm going to use one more, put it in the very center. And I'm going to change this to a lighter color, or you could change it to a different color completely. Zooming out using command and the minus key. And you can see that you have created a pattern that automatically repeats by using symbols. Sometimes these things can get a little off because if I were to move any one of these symbols, you can see that these circles are still showing fully and you can tell that they're overlapping as opposed to being a tile. So it's the best way of doing that and it can really affect the way that it's repeating if you have something that you have changed the opacity on. So back in this very first symbol, I'm going to copy the rectangle and I'm going to change this to a no fill and no stroke rectangle. And then I'm going to take those ellipses and I'm just going to drop it below so it creates like a clipping mask. And you can tell when you go in here, I mean, you can already see the lines that are appearing and you move it and you can see that it is now a tile instead of things that are overlapping. And if you want to change anything in, you can go into that very first symbol. Let's say we want to change this to more of a Christmas pattern. You can go in 
and make green dots. So it's the green and red. Change this to, I think I'm just gonna do white. <laughs> so you have successfully made your first repeating pattern in your template using symbols. <laughs> that is a mouthful to say, but you could save this like I said, as a template and every single time you go to make a pattern, you can use this and it gives you a good idea of how your pattern is going to look as a repeat. So if you want to export this, you can select this first symbol, go to file, export, And you can save it either as PNG or JPEG. Most of the sites do require one of those two. Select the size that you would like it. The area, you can do your artboard one. You can do selection with background and that is fine. Export. And as you can see, so there's the tile. Very easy to upload to places like Spoonflower if you're wanting to buy your pattern as fabric or wallpaper. And I think they have gift wrap as well. So in two weeks, I will release another video on using symbols and how to set up a template to create half drop repeats in Affinity Designer. And it's another great way so you can see how your pattern is going to look. And it's a lot easier than having to go in and do this every single time you want to export something for yourself or the print on demand sites. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks guys.